name's Lauren Hagenfeld, and the idea for my senior project came about after reading up on the ASME design competition. ASME came up with the idea for the design competition after meeting the nuclear industry's request for a proposal for, um, to design and build a small remote controlled vehicle. The purpose of the vehicle was to determine the level of radioactivity at specified locations and inspect the damage. Because the vehicle is remote control and camera operated, it will protect the operator from absorbing the high dose of radioactive contamination, and information could easily be gained by the inspection vehicle that could inform the operators of um, an accident and begin to the repairs. There were quite a few requirements for this competition, one of them was that the device had to be remote control operated, uh, uses only rechargeable batteries, um, visuals only come from the cameras that are installed on the vehicle, uh, must be able to push buttons, pick up and drop off items, maneuver around obstacles, and read gauge readings that are flush with the ground. One of the major parts of the analysis was making sure to design an arm that was able to grab an item that was one inch in diameter. The reason for this is because in the competition itself, they use represented sensors. So this is what one of the sensors would look like. It's an inch in diameter and two inches tall. So as you can see, these are the drawings for the arm design. The next one, or the next part of analysis is making sure that no interferences would occur. One of the biggest interference, um, not issues, uh, but was something I wanted to make sure wouldn't happen was that the arm, I didn't want it to conflict with the steering or the wheels or the housing that I built for the actual vehicle. Another interference that actually occurred after the device was built over here, points that you know what I'm talking about. This is a steering servo, and this is a steering servo arm and steering rod with the base housing. And the problem that occurred with this was the original steering servo we had, this arm wasn't long enough, and it caused the rod to rub up against the base housing and caused a lot of friction and actually caused my steering motor, motor to, uh, or sorry, steering servo to burn out. So a new steering server was purchased and um, a new attachment had to be made in order to make the steering rod long enough so that no more interference would occur with the base housing. There are four major parts to the manufacturing. Um, the arm, the base housing, side panels, and an RC rock collar. And the reason why RC rock crawler was a big part of the manufacturing process was because this project originally started out with three team members, and one of the team members ended up dropping out of the project a third of the way through the school year. He was in charge of wheels, steering, and axles. So as you can see, there's a picture of the rock crawler I purchased, and parts were harvested from that device in order to fill his empty spot. So we borrowed the wheels and the steering, in the axles. The rest, such as the base housing, here's drawings for it, and uh, also the side panels were drawn up on SolidWorks, put in a master cam, and then code was written so that I could machine them using CNC. And then the actual arm itself was uh, manufactured using an erector set. There was an issue with the manufacturing process as far as the arm goes. If you can see on the actual vehicle itself, the arm reaches quite high compared to the actual sensor. So an extension had to be made to the arm in order for it to actually reach the represented sensor. So I have two pieces here. The piece closest to me was the piece that I originally started out with to build the extensions. It was about eighth inch material, but when we attempted to bend it to form to the arm, it ended up cracking. So you can see the crack coming up in here. So we resorted to sheet metal. Sheet metal is really nice to work with because it's easily bendable. You can easily punch holes through it. And when you bend it, it makes it a lot more durable. So 
here's me holding the extensions to the actual arm. As far as budget goes, I estimated a budget of $141. Um, my actual budget was $312. A couple reasons behind the budget being so much higher than I had estimated was I had to replace one of the steering servos, and also my other partner, Mark, was in charge of creating a circuit board to make the arm move, and after that failed, we purchased another steering servo in order to make the arm move. It was a quick backup thing. <laughs> Um, also, he was in charge of wiring the remote control and having it work for our device. But one of the switch fried. One of the switches fried in it, and it was unusable after that. So I had to make a quick run down to Yakima and purchase a new one. <clears throat> this is the test design layout that we used for the competition and for all my test runs. It's a 5 meter by 7.75 meter. Um, there's five different areas within the layout. There's parking, daydreaming, push button, drop off sensor, and pick up sensor. And how this works is the device is not allowed to go outside of this border. If it does, there's penalty points taken away from the overall score. So one team member places the vehicle in the parking area with the sensor already grasped in the arm and the other team member is in a separate room where the course is not visible, so they are only relying on their camera and vision. And the operator must drive to the gauge area, read the gauge reading off the ground, go, to the, go and push a button, go drop off the sensor it originally started with, and go pick up a new sensor and return to the parking area. And on this course, there are obstacles, random obstacles laid out all over the course, such as tires, cones, rocks, pieces of metal, anything that can, that can get in the way. And there's a maximum time limit of five minutes. And when I was doing my test runs, I actually took a table. I recorded each run, how many tasks were completed, the time it took. And my quickest time was 99 seconds, which is down here at the bottom. And my slowest time was 242 seconds, which it, but it's almost the max amount of time. <laughs> and uh, the reason behind this, I'm actually going to show you a video from my slowest run, which is why I can't show you the whole video. Um, but one of the issues was this little camera up here runs on the same frequency as our controller. It caused a lot of interference issues and made it so that our controller would cut in and out during our runs. So we ended up disconnecting this so it would no longer interfering with this one, but the only problem is we were only using this camera, which has to have a wide enough angle to see obstacles in front of it, so we can only lower it so much that it can see the very tip of the arm. So once the sensor got approximately two inches from the arm, it was impossible to tell where it was after that. So I'm going to show you some failed attempts at trying to grab the sensor. I'm just going to talk a little bit through it. So this is going to be a call. We'll approach the sensor. And you'll see the arms close. And the operator will back up the vehicle. The reason for backing up the vehicle is, like I said, they can't tell whether or not they picked up the sensor. They're only able to see if the arm is open or closed. So they'll go back in for another attempt if they back up and still see the sensor. And once the sensor is grabbed, they back up, no longer see it, and they are able to continue with their run. <coughs> At the actual ASME competition, our vehicle ended up getting approximately fifth out of ten different schools. Um, the competition was scored using the formula on the board. The R equals the task score, all, each one of those uh, places on the layout were worth a certain amount of points. So pushing the button was worth a thousand, or reading the gauge was worth a thousand points, pushing the button was worth three thousand points, dropping off the sensor was worth two thousand, and picking up the sensor and returning to the parking area was worth another two thousand points for a total of eight thousand. So 
And then T equals the times the device touched the border tape. Like I said, you're not allowed to go out of bounds, so even if it touches the tape, it counts. And S is the time it took for the device to complete the course run, and the time stops once the device is back in the parking area. The reason I'm not doing very well is the fact that barely any practice was performed before the actual competition. This was due to late construction fences, such as the remote control, the steering servo, and testing were done before the competition. This vehicle could have been extremely successful. Are there any questions? 